I'm John Batchelor. This is the John Batchelor Show. The Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant tragedy from March has a first consequence, a significant consequence on the other side of the world. Angela Merkel, the chancellor of all the Germans, has announced that all nuclear plants, that's right, all of them, will be phased out in her country by the year 2022. This is a stunning reversal of a woman who is identified with being a scientist from a training in East Germany. She leads all the Germans, and she is not, at this point, confident uh, that her political future is uh, determined uh, unless she bows to what is called the Green Party in Germany. This is more complicated than American politics because there are multiple party systems, but right now the, the, what is to be explained is this political reversal of fortune for Angela Merkel and her commitment to extending the life of nuclear plants that was just this past, oh, within the last year. Alan Cowell is a senior correspondent for the New York Times based in Europe, and he is in Berlin, and this surprising change must have an explanation in German politics, but I'm not sure where. Alan, a very good evening to you. Thank you for this. Angela Merkel, stunning to close all the plants. Before I ask, uh, are they going to go off electricity entirely? Did this stun uh, Germany? Was everybody taken by surprise by this? I mean, there was a broad consensus that uh, the, 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 the Chancellor planned very firmly to stay with her program, which involved extending the life of the nuclear plants way into the 2030s, far beyond what had been uh, envisioned before. Uh, then, when she saw how much ground she was losing in the local state elections, she had a rethink. The rethink is to, to deal, her, her party is the Christian Democratic Union, and the rethink is the Greens. What is the Green Party to Germany? Is it a player that can take control of the chancellorship? Does it have a number that we can talk about, Alan? The Green Party is an integral part of German, in German politics and has been since the 70s and 80s. It grew from an environmental movement. It's, it's, uh, the Greens have already been in coalition with, with the Social Democrat opposition before Mrs. Merkel came to power, and they're very much part of the scene here. It's not as if they're a fringe movement. Uh, there's a very strong environmental lobby uh, in in Germany, and unlike in some other European countries, where the um, the, the, the environmental uh, lobby sees nuclear power as a potential source of renewable energy rather than as a threat, in Germany it's the opposite. The Green Party is, has built its reputation since the 80s on being against the expansion of nuclear power, and no nuclear power stations, new ones, have been built since uh, the Greens uh, began their ascendancy. Does that make this decision popular? I'm trying to read this, given the needs of Germany and its export economy. This is a very popular decision among, among Germans. There doesn't seem to be any doubt about that. It's what a lot of people wanted. Most of the opinion surveys, there was a very interesting survey in March, for instance, that said that 70 percent of Germans thought that Mrs. Merkel was playing electoral politics by reversing her nuclear energy policies. But at the same time, 70% of people, the same proportion, said they'd be happy to pay more for their electricity if it was derived from renewable sources other than nuclear. Is it at this point argued in Germany that they can replace 25% of their electricity needs with renewable sources by 2022? Is that realistic? Well, I don't think it's realistic, but in the long term, you know, a lot of uh, Germany's neighbors, particularly France, where 80 percent of the electricity comes from nuclear power stations, that is a, a source of, of, of electricity for, for the Germans to import, as they do at the moment. Poland to the east is also very keen to develop its own nuclear capability, its own nuclear resources in terms of electricity generation. So that's another source of, of power that Germany could import. But the main thrust of what Mrs. Merkel has been trying to say is that in the long term, whether it's 2022 or later, 
Germany ought to be able to replace this uh, one quarter of its electricity uh, with renewable sources from, right. from wind turbines and all the other familiar biomass and the other familiar sources. Now, if I understand this argument, Alan, the nuclear energy in France and the nuclear energy in Poland will be used to supplement German needs in this transition. But, of course, the way nuclear accidents work, that would not protect the Germans were there an accident in Poland or in France. So this isn't really out of sight, out of mind, because uh, in the event of catastrophe, the Germans will suffer. Well, exactly, and that's one of the, the, the fundamental flaws of the whole argument. What started this off, some people have told me the the reason that Germany is so sensitive, or one of the reasons Germany is so sensitive about nuclear power is the Chernobyl um, meltdown in 1986, which, uh, if you remember, uh, really convinced Germans that this technology could never, ever be safe, even though it was from uh, an old Soviet-era uh, technology that produced, produced a meltdown. There's one other possibility, and you suggested in your piece, Alan, this is Alan Cowell, the New York Times, which is that this is, in fact, a surrogate for some kind of larger political cultural debate. You quote a, a professor in Frankfurt, Reinhard Wolf, saying, you're either with us or against us. Now, that sounds very American of them. You know, we, we, we don't like uh, multiple answers. We like either right or wrong. So it sounds like the nuclear energy argument is substituting for some larger cultural clash in Germany. Am I reading that correctly? Well, it's very interesting you should say that because before, uh, part of what Professor Wolf was saying to me was the comparison he made was with, with President uh, George W. Bush uh, in relation to the threat of terrorism, saying you're either with us or against us. And he compared uh, Germany's current polarization in the nuclear debate to exactly that same divergence of views uh, that America uh, projected towards the rest of the world after 9-11. And indeed, people here have been casting the entire nuclear debate in, in similarly apocalyptic terms and saying, you know, what happened in Fukushima in, on the 9th of March, on the 11th of March, uh, was, was, was as much a mile as what happened in America on September the 11th. So the Germans are taking this to an extreme, and Merkel is successful at this moment. Is there any challenge to her decision, uh, because this is an economic decision as well as a cultural one? Well, economically, of course, it's going to make power. It could make power more expensive. It could make it more expensive for Germany's highly successful uh, export industry to keep on producing these advanced uh, machine tools and and, and other products that, that have made the German economy boom, not just recently, but over many decades. Uh, that, that's one aspect of, of this whole debate, and that there is a cost. The only opposition, though, that seems to be coming from Mrs. Merkel is from people who are saying, well, if we're going to do it by 2022, why can't we do it earlier? Alan Cowell is a senior correspondent for The New York Times, reporting on the decision of Mrs. Merkel reversing herself to close all nuclear plants, 25% of the electricity grid in Germany by 2022. I'm John Batchelor. This is The John Batchelor Show.